We have here a BSA A65 Thunderbolt. 1967, I acquired this bike, as you see it here. The engine's been taken out and was stripped down. We'll, we'll show you in a moment. It had a, a few issues, nothing serious. The plan is with this bike is to, over a period of no more than a couple of months, we do an engine rebuild. We're a good way on with that in a moment and we'll show you that. But we're gonna put the whole thing back together, put the engine back together, and then we're gonna put it back in the frame and have the bike on the road, and you can see. But we don't need to, to spend a great deal on this. I mean, everything is in fairly good order. And when it is up together, it would just be coated with an oil spray and um, just protected during the winter and ridden. As that's what they were for, really. I mean, it's only because we now see motorcycling as recreational um, for a lot of people. But in the day, you didn't have a car, you had a motorcycle, and it's your everyday means of transport. And that's where, really, we're trying to put this bike back on the road as an everyday bike. As far as I've looked at it so far, the cycle parts are all in good order. I think it's an American export model because it's got the small tank, it's got the rake back handlebars, but the Thunderbolt and the Lightning were very similar. Thunderbolt was a single carburetor, 650. It's what came after the A10, the pre-unit. This is a unit construction engine. This, this model of bike, the A50, which is the 500, and the A65, the 650, that came into production early 60s. The A10 and the A7, the pre-unit, models that were before this were quite an expensive bike to produce and um, with Triumph had already decided to go unit construction and I think BSA wanted to move on and to upgrade what they'd already got because the A10 and A7 had been around for a long time so this was uh, a more modern motorcycle with 12 volt electrics. Um, I think it was a little bit cheaper to produce because it's just a, a unit construction everything was all built in one. In a previous video, we showed me honing out these cylinder bores. I did, in fact, use a finer stone and finish it off afterwards. And I'm going to get you just to have a look, and you'll see now that the finish that we've got now is very good. The reason we had to hone these out, because there was some seizure marks, and I'll show you those in a moment. But it's 24 oversized, there's no lip in the top of the bores, there's no wear. And all I've done is, is just literally just cleaned them up. If the camera can see down here, there was originally a seizure. Well, I put my finger now there, there's nothing there now at all. You just see very light surface marks. Well, that won't affect it, it won't smoke. And when we put this together, I'll show you that the bike will run as clean as anything. So we're just going to put new rings in there. And I did show you the pistons previously. Now this is the, the right hand piston. And this is where it's cleaned up. Now it's a good serviceable piston. With new rings that'd be fine. This is where we had this with a seizure. Now if you was racing bikes in the paddock, if you nipped up a bike, you would come in, you would whip the head off, the barrels off, and you clean that up and you do exactly the same as I'm doing now. And that would be out in the next session for racing. That is not going to be an issue. I've just taken high spots off that. What's important is the glands where the rings run. These are the glands. And if the rings sit in there properly and you've got a decent bore, she won't be a problem. So that's the right hand side, left hand piston. Very good. We are making sure everything that is necessary is done. But um, just to say, you don't always think, ah, oh, the bores need a rebore. You could end up opening that bore up to another 20 foul, going out to 40, new set of pistons. So you're paying out for new pistons, complete with rings and a rebore. And that makes that really quite expensive. And all I've done is honed it out, new set of rings. There's a big difference in how much I'm spending. And I'm not wearing those bores out by oversizing when I don't need to. So right, come to the bottom end, the crankcase assembly. When I received the bike and I picked it up, it was all in pieces. The engine had been stripped right down. Now what I've done so far is the bottom end itself, the crank's back in, the, the bearings, the crank's all shimmed up. So I've used the original shells, they weren't worn. I have got some parts coming for this, hopefully in the next week, and then in the next video you'll see the barrels back on and, you know, it comes together again. So that's the bottom end. And the gearbox is a cluster. And being in construction, this all goes into one unit. 
the whole thing is one. So this is a cassette and you can build this lot up quite easily on the bench. And there's one or two gears that I have replaced now. If you look at some of the sliding dogs, these ones, just a little bit rounded, they're fine. So I've built this up with some spare gears I had for it. So I've got a good bottom end, uh, it's a good gearbox, sorry. So all the components in there are all good. So all we're gonna really need for this to put this in good order is a gasket set, tab washer set. I'm gonna put a, a new sprocket on the gearbox here, a 21 inch tooth sprocket, set of um, 20 foul oversized rings, the kickstart ratchet sprocket here. There is quite a bit of wear. That's where sometimes you find people will kick on a kickstart, won't let it engage properly, kick a bit too quick, and it, they catch the tooth, it burrs a little bit. Rather than being too rough, always come to your position with your foot to engage it, then kick it. Rather than that initial bang down and the gears aren't meshed properly. The head I've not looked at yet, I'm just gonna show you. I think it's in fairly good order. There's no broken fins or cracking. And you can see that carburation looks like it's been fairly good. We're gonna drop out a valve and we can look at the seat of the valve and see what the valve guide's like. So we're gonna put a, a tool in there to take the spring out and the collets out. So with a magnet now, I should be able to just pull those out. There's one collet. There's the other one. So now we've released both the collets, taken the tool away. I just put my finger on there and got the valve. Now what I'm gonna show you now is by pulling a valve up before taking it apart. There's a lot of wear and tear in that guide. So it looks like we'll be replacing all four guides anyway. And that is really bad. Um, yeah, it's done quite a bit of work. But the seats themselves, they were cut out, they'd be fine. We've just dropped the spring out now. I've just relieved the valve springs. You have a second spring, primary spring in here, and the main spring. And the bottom cup is still on top of the valve guide, so hopefully pair pliers will just get in there and lift that away. With reference to what I showed you just now with um, extensive valve guide wear, when we have this amount of wear, it's so easy to think, because you're burning a lot of oil, you think that your engine, oh, it's got to be rings, it's got to be scored. So you, you're in a hurry actually to take the barrels off and look at the rings and the rest of it. It's not, it's not as far down as that. It's in the top end, it's in the head. This head, alley head, with worn guides will rattle like mad. And you might think to start with, it's like your tappet adjustments out. You're not gonna get a proper adjust, a tappet adjustment uh, really, because this is wobbling about so much. When that's in operation, that's gonna be all over the place. It's gonna be pinging, making all sorts of horrible noises like this. And that poor old valve is, is not going up and down straight anyway. It's wobbling about. So, it's very easy to, to think that you've got more going on than you really have. Just look at your valve, guys. Don't just take your head off, take your, take your valve springs out, check your valve and your guide, and make sure that's good before you go any deeper, really. Because what you'll find, once you your head off, you'll move the piston, you think, actually, there's not a lot of wear there. There's not a lot of movement. Get your head sorted out first. If your head seems to be, you know, like, you can't see any score marks in the barrel, and not excessive movement, it will be oil because it's dropped down from the valve guide, but it's more likely to be all located in the top here. So yeah, so one that it can get missed a little bit and it's easily rectified. But the head itself is good, so well, that can be refurbished quite cheaply really. And like I say, reference, you've got an old oven, a small oven, but I've got an oven in the back here that I don't use. I'll chemically get that nice and clean so there's no smell, and I'll heat it up in the oven, get that really nice and warm, then I'll drift those valve guides out. They come out because you expand the aluminium. When we come to taking these valve guides out, when it's been in the oven, it's nice and hot, take it out, get it on the bench, 
this is not the right diameter, so I need to make another one of these, but just spin it on the lathe. Piece of brass, and you do this dimension the same size as the valve um, itself. So it'll fit down into the guide with a nice, good fit. It wants to go down a good way because you want to support this before you drift it out. So imagine this is the right size, exactly nice kiss fit down inside. So we put that down inside and it's nice and held nice and straight and you can give it a good drift out. Because that's fairly hot, you can do this fairly quickly, that guide will come out quickly. So we'll do all four very, very quick. We won't do it today because we haven't got new guides. But when it's all cleaned up, when we get the new guides, we'll take these ones out and we'll show you what we do. Once we've put new guides in, we we'll need to recut these seats, the valve seats, and the new valves will have to be just lapped in, that's all. But a piece of brass is always good for that job. Don't use steel, use a piece of brass. Just looking at the, the actual bike itself, the chassis, you know, the rolling chassis we've got here, um, I've not looked at it really. It's, it's not in bad order. Um, all I've done so far is literally just taken the seat off and I've taken a, there's a rack on the back, I've taken that off. And in the process of putting a commando um, handrail on the back, because it's quite handy when you put it onto the main stand and if you take a pillion, they've got somewhere to hold on to. So they're just going to modify it to fit. I'll show you that in a moment a bit more. But getting back to this, like swing arm bushes, like here is your swing arm. And I can't actually feel any movement. So the swing arm is good. That's all in good order. You know, it hasn't got any bearing wear in the bearings. You know, the, the brake plate, that is actually loose on the, on the shaft. So it just wants a washer underneath there. Yeah, it's had um, a few modern components put on this. It's got electronic ignition. And so, yeah, it's done away with the points assembly. So that's not a bad thing. So it's been upgraded a little bit. My guard and the frame are in good order. The patina is nice. The, that's what I want to try and keep, really. So I don't want to do it up. It's nice to have a bike, like I say, that you can just ride and not worry about. Just or just an oily rag, WD-40, squirt over it and wipe it over. Oil tank here, um, yeah, we're going to put new lines on here, new feed and uh, return. It had been modified to uh, an oil filter, but I'll do away with that, because oil changes are so cheap on these things, aren't they? And the oil is the lifeblood of any engine, so I believe in changing it more regularly, really, rather than trying to make it last longer. A pair of coils here, because it's um, coil ignition rather than a, on the A10 we were talking about earlier, which is a magneto. So we've got 12 volt electrics here, a single carburetor, tiny little tank. But the frame, yeah, we're not going to do anything with this. It hasn't got any rust factor in it. But the rims are slightly, slightly lifted a little bit, the chrome, but it doesn't matter. Got a nice brake on the front, and uh, the gaiters probably could do with replacing it at some stage, but that could be done at a later time. Seat's in quite good order. The underside, what we call the seat tray itself, it's got a set of some repair work here, actually, looking at it closely. I probably will actually do this better, grind this down. We've got these spider cracks, grind that right off and re-weld that. The tank is a chrome tank, it's a little bit of black paint on it, but it's in really good order. Because we haven't got the engine in the frame, uh, it's a little bit difficult lifting this back without this falling off the bench. But just gonna give you an idea of what it's like on the front, the forks. So we're gonna do a similar thing to what we do on most bikes, is just lift this off the ground a little bit, pull on the forks, it's pulling on the main stand, so I've got to be a bit careful. But I can't feel any movement on those fork leg bushes. And if I do this again, I'm looking for movement and head race bearings. Just bearing in mind the damper is off. I can't feel any lumpiness. I've got my wheel clamp here in the way a little bit, but what we'll do with this anyway, we will pack it with grease. I will make sure this is okay. I probably will take that apart and pack that with grease, but there's no wear. And if I lift up the front wheel off the ground a little bit, off the bench, spin the wheel, 
it's got a tiny little buckle in there but nothing to worry about and the wheel bearings are good we've got the bike on the main stand here but i've noticed that the side stand has got a cable tie on it this this like here should be braised to the frame well it's broken the braze is broken what we'll do is we'll position this in the correct position and we'll redo this before we put the engine back in the frame we'll take this paint bag off here because it has been repaired in the past now we drop the bike down on the bench onto the floor height you can see no rev counter just a speedo and the pod is got it's, it's a rubber pod here it's cracked it's a bit perished so we might get another one of those but headlight anything else yeah it's all nice it's in good order switch works okay whether this is original i don't know but it has a tool pouch which is quite handy the exhaust system a little bit tatty these are the down pipes and these are actually not too bad they will clean up um, but on most of the models there should be a balance pipe these ones haven't got that doesn't need it a lot of people on a replacement system won't have that and the silencers well these are Campbell's you can't get Campbell's anymore and they are a really nice exhaust system they sound quite throaty I've shown you where we are today with the engine and, and have a quick look at the bike itself the rolling chassis now because I've done a bit of work on here already, got the crank back in, the timing gears and the oil pump. The next stage will be put the um, a gearbox cassette back in. Then we can put the clutch in and we'll do this. Now I'll take some pictures and show you along the way. We can get the alternator in properly. Barrels, pistons, they're up to where we are with the head. The head we can't do at the moment. I haven't got any new valve guides. And like I say, I'm going to have to make a tool up and we'll knock those guides out. Then we can install the new guides and cut the seats and show you that part of it. But it really basically you can build up the bottom end. So next time we see you, we'll be a little bit further on.